<laughs> so I'll share a little bit more about the triple platform ordination that I recently attended. Uh, every day at the platform, the senior bhikshu and bhikshuni guides were teaching us by their example. We had six um, senior bhikshus. They were mostly uh, working with the, the monks, but also they were helping the nuns uh, learn the training. And, and, and then we also had six senior bhikshuni guides. Um, they taught us by their example, mainly. They taught us by their example, through their comportment and through their compassion, their kindness, uh, their presence. And uh, we were given a lot of correction, especially during meals or after meals. <laughs> and although the process felt daunting at times, it was helpful to remember that each one of them really wanted each one of us to receive the precepts in the best way. So that was helpful. Um, over the seven weeks, we simplified our lives. We restrained our movements. We disciplined old habits and quieted our minds. And everything about that environment was so conducive for developing ethical conduct in particular, but also concentration and, and wisdom. Even though we were in constant motion, the schedule was pretty tight. I especially appreciated the second monk guide who often gave us such kind and wise and very precise instruction and encouragement. There were some monks who had more of a derogatory uh, tone, <laughs> but this monk was consistently encouraging and he drew a lot from the four establishments of mindfulness uh, in teaching us how to work with our minds. And so he encouraged us to observe our breath in the few moments waiting for lunch or waiting for something to happen, to observe our thoughts, to observe our feelings, our discriminations, uh, to really pay attention to what was going on and to use every spare moment, really. That's, that was his message, to use every spare moment to develop concentration. Um, so even if we only had two or three minutes, he was uh, encouraging us in that, in that regard. We spent about eight or nine days rehearsing for the full ordination ceremony, which is the second platform. And many parts we chanted in Mandarin um, with lots of full bows and half bows and spreading that sitting cloth in various ways. <laughs> and uh, it felt very supportive to look over and see Venerable's children and Damcho on the sidelines uh, during that time. It was very, very encouraging. The ceremony takes two or more days. On the first morning, we request the preceptors and the precepts from the preceptors. And we also had a special confession and repentance ceremony that evening. And then the actual ordination happens the next day. First of all, we receive our new robes and our bowls and probably various other things. And then we go off in groups of three. First of all, to meet with the bhikshuni preceptors and the witnesses and do a particular set of rituals with them. And then to go off and do the same thing, to have that confirmed uh, with the bhikshu preceptors and witnesses. And so the Westerners had memorized uh, all the responses that we had to give. We had memorized our woos and our phase and the name of our preceptor. <laughs> but we found out at the last minute that we had to re make the request in Mandarin. And also we had to recite this um, three resolves in Mandarin. And so we were a little bit freaked out about that. But we immediately started memorizing and it turned out OK. I think <laughs> they didn't turn us away. So we passed. They say that one becomes an adult in the Dharma with full ordination. And uh, one becomes a true Sangha member, capable of fully participating in the bi-monthly posada and the rains retreat, the varsa, uh, the pra pravarana, and other Sangha karmans. And eventually one becomes eligible to bestow ordination on others, which serves to preserve and spread the Buddha Dharma, which is one of the main missions, I think, of the Abbey. And, um, this is one reason that the ordination is considered so precious, so valuable. And I think for myself, I was afraid to fully acknowledge this before I went because I was afraid it would diminish my years as a seminary, but that was unfounded and un unnecessary. Um, so, yeah. Each of the 348 bhikshuni precepts protects us from some negativity, some affliction. 
And uh, we may wonder why many of the precepts are concerned with things that are seemingly mundane or trivial, uh, like what we can, what we can and cannot eat, what we can and cannot wear, and uh, where we can and cannot sit and spit and blow our nose. Um, but Master Binyin, who taught the Karmans, explained that precepts give us a way to observe our mind and also to see the relationship between the mind and the objects that we're encountering all day long. Holding precepts really highlights the craving in our mind, and especially the craving for the self. And so I thought that was a very interesting uh, way to think about it. The precepts make it more obvious when we create negativity. And uh, we can't see the mind, but we can certainly see what we love to eat, and what we like to wear, and who we like to hang out with, and how we like to be involved with pleasant sights and sounds and smells and tastes. And so our precepts help us to restrain the six sense doors. Otherwise, there's no way really to cultivate strong concentration. And he made the case, as we've often heard, that without strong concentration, there's no way to develop true wisdom that we need for liberation and enlightenment. So as I mentioned yesterday, learning the Vinaya may seem difficult, especially the Karmans, but Master Binyan really made the point that um, nothing is too difficult if we have the proper motivation and intention. The Karmans show us how to organize the community's actions. And it's our responsibility then to learn the prescriptive precepts as well as the proscriptive precepts. Because we can't even do posada or varsa or give ordination without establishing a territory. And the Karmans show us how to do that. So he explained a lot of those details. I'm looking forward to reading more of the book. We went on alms round one day. That was very interesting. After the full ordination, they had put out a flyer and posted it all over town uh, of the route that we would take. And it was so moving and so humbling um, to be received by so many people. Often, um, mothers would bring their young children to get them in the habit of putting... Uh, in this particular situation, we weren't collecting food. We were collecting money for to donate to a charity, and that was made clear right up front. But to see the video of the Sangha moving through town, a long line of people all dressed the same with our big blue straw hats, um, and we were advised not to acknowledge people, but just to walk quick, quietly and uh, move through town. That was a very moving experience. Um, honestly, I struggled with the third platform, um, which was about taking the bodhisattva precepts. I'm very happy with the bodhisattva precepts I have already. Thank you very much. And, uh, and although they talked about the precepts and used the word bodhicitta, my, my heart just never felt stirred like His Holiness can stir when he talks about bodhicitta. Um, but nevertheless, it was interesting to, to look at both the presentations because both have something to offer, of course. And the night before the third platform, we had an opportunity to make an offering of light and incense on our body, as Shakyamuni Buddha had done many times in many lives, many previous lives. I don't know that anybody's talked about that before. I didn't know much about it before I went. I thought it was just part of the bhikshuni ordination, but actually it was a separate part and, and associated more with the bodhisattva precepts. So they, they put three little dots on your head, minor slightly off-center, but that's okay. And they, <laughs> it's what you get, it's my karma. And they put three little cones of incense on top and then light them. And um, I, I, again, I was waiting for someone to motivate me, you know, to, to really give the setup like we often do, like Venerable often does here or how I've experienced things in the past, but it, it didn't come. And so I realized at that point that I'm 100% responsible for my motivation. I can't rely on others to do that for me. Um, so it was, um, Venerable Damcha had said it would feel like a mosquito bite. You lied. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm not blaming you. I'm over it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but again, it was a very interesting experience uh, to, to go through that process. Um, So the triple platform was, for me, it was an invaluable, invaluable training, really an invaluable training, and a demonstration of the incredible kindness, so much kindness in the world. It's so easy to rejoice because there were so many causes and conditions that came together for all of us that were involved in that platform. 
and contributed to the experience that we had, not only the senior guides and the teachers, the preceptors, the witnesses, um, but also the hosting temple and their army of volunteers. There were people out there cooking at 3 in the morning so that we would have breakfast. That's a lot of breakfast for 120 people. Um, also, the kindness of my own abbess, the Venerable Children, and um, all of the community who took up the slack for the little things that I take care of here while I was away. Um, and all those who offered financial support um, for me to engage in the in the process, I really appreciate that. And and the, the encouragement and the, uh, the the acknowledgement that I've received since coming home, the generosity is truly staggering, and and I'm forever grateful for this experience. I just will mention that after the ordination, I spent three blissful days at Luminary Temple, in the the south in Jai, uh, where Master Venerable Master Wu Yin lives. I had a chance to have some really nice conversations with Venerable Jin Kerr and finally able to speak to one of the guides, Venerable Jin Rong, who doesn't speak English. So we had a chance to have some translation. And, um, and then, yeah, it was just like a pure land. Um, they are so refined there and uh, so diligent in their practice and, and really so steeped over centuries uh, in the Buddha Dharma. And then uh, our dear friend who spent a month with us last year, Venerable Zuchi, met me uh, the day before I left, and she organized the fast train back to Taipei and, and accompanied me on the train. So it was lovely to catch up with her, and we had some really nice Dharma conversation about what we were learning and where we were growing. That was very nice. So these are just a few impressions that I thought to share. Um, the full ordination was such a rich experience, and also a very personal one in many ways, I'm finding. And so it feels a bit premature to talk about it. I'm sure it will take a long time to really integrate uh, the things that happen, but thanks. <laughs>